Great news. We now have a Patreon account. Patreon allows you to support us so that we can continue to grow the podcast, bring you amazing content, and make sure that we bring you the best guests to help you level up your life and business. For as little as $1, you can support us. And there's also different levels that allow you to donate and support the podcast that give you exclusive access to behind the scenes content, tools, resources, coaching, and so much more. So if you'd love to support us, just go to patreon.com slash grind and gratitude. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash grind and gratitude, or just click the link in this episode. Thank you so much. To all of my business owners out there and all those entrepreneurs that may be going through a difficult time right now, and maybe you're ready to just quit. Maybe you're ready to shut the business down and just quit and go and do something else. Listen, I've definitely been there before many times, and I just want to say this to you. Maybe now's not the time to quit. Maybe you have to do a few things before you actually shut down the business. And I want to talk to you about three things that you should do before you quit on your business. Coming up next in this episode. You're listening to the Grind and Gratitude Show. I am Danny Stone, and I've dedicated my entire life to helping people win. Win in their careers, win in their businesses, and win in their lives. This podcast is going to help you get on your grind and hustle to create the life that you love and walk in gratitude along the journey. Each episode, I'll teach you tools and tactics and bring you conversations with experts that will help you turn your passion into a thriving online business. Life isn't about wishing for something greater. It's about making it happen. There's something special about you. Grind until you find it. Be grateful when you get it. What is up? What is going on, podcast family? Coach Stone is in the building. Super excited to be here this week because we're going to get into some really good stuff. And if this is your first time tuning in, you're in for a treat. Well, that's up to you to decide. (laughs) But if you're an avid listener and you've been here before, thank you so much. I got mad love for you. Today, I want to talk to you about not shutting down that business that you have. I'm talking to all the entrepreneurs. I'm talking to all the people who have businesses, all the people who have side hustles. And right now you're kind of feeling overwhelmed and maybe you're thinking, I should shut this thing down. It's not working out. I'm not reaching the right clients. I'm not making sales. The business isn't growing. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why do I continue to do this when things aren't going the way that I want them to go in my business? I'm at a standstill. It's not growing. I'm not making money. Definitely been there before. I've been there so many times. I've had so many businesses over the last 10 or 12 years, and many of them have failed. And, you know, whether it was a t-shirt business, a watch company, I've had different types of consulting businesses. Some of them just outright failed. Others I just realized I wasn't passionate about, and and I just let them go. And I want to talk to you about some things that you should do if you're feeling this way right now. Like, if you're feeling like, why am I doing this? And this business just isn't for me. Or maybe you're trying to pivot or maybe you're just trying to like really just close the business down because you're you're tired of it and it's not working. Then I want to give you a couple of things to consider before you get to that point. And by the way, I'm not saying that you should never shut down your business. Like I said, I've closed down, you know, different businesses over the years for different reasons, as I said. But I just want you to think about it. Is it you want is it the fact that you might want to close the business down because it's just not going as you expect? Is it because you're not getting the sales that you want? Is it because you realize that you're just not passionate about this thing anymore? Is it because you realize that you can't make money doing this thing anymore? Maybe you think the market is saturated and you're just you know one of a, a billion people already doing the same thing. Like what is it that has you thinking about possibly closing down your business. I mean, that's the first thing you have to ask yourself. Like, what is this all about? Why am I feeling this way? And and what is it, right? That's what you have to ask yourself. But there's three things that I, I feel that you have to ask yourself before you close down the business. And 
I figured these things out along the way before closing down some of my businesses and continuing to do what I do now. You know, being a coach and a speaker and so on, there have been times where I just thought, man, you know, not that I wanted to quit, but I was just like, I'm not at the level that I want to be at. And is this really worth it? Like everything that I'm doing, am I ever going to get to that level? And, you know, as I started to continue and grow and reach bigger audiences and, you know, get more coaching clients and launch courses and programs over the years, I realized that I should have stayed the course and I did. And I was really happy that I did. But I also realized that there's three things that you should consider if you're thinking about shutting down your business. The first one is you got to get clear on your messaging. Like you have to ask yourself, is the business not successful because my messaging isn't clear? Right? That's a good question to ask yourself, right? Because sometimes you might have an awesome service or a product, like maybe you're a coach or maybe you're a speaker or maybe you do social media marketing or some other type of online marketing, or maybe you have products, you sell physical products like makeup or or sneakers or, or, or jewelry, whatever it is. Maybe it's just the fact that your communication isn't clear, your messaging isn't clear. So before you get ready to close down the business, like ask yourself, is my messaging clear? Am I, am I um, sending out messages that help potential customers understand what my product or service is? Am I helping them to solve a big problem? Am I have, am I have, (laughs) do I have a clear picture of what it is that my product or service does? The USP, unique selling proposition. Is that clear? Right? Because sometimes you, you, we, we think our messaging is clear and it's not. And we have to really understand, are we helping people to understand what their struggles are and their pain points? Are we helping them to understand how your product or service is going to help them with that pain point? Are you selling the dream or the solution, right? Because sometimes we spend too much time talking about the product or the service and the ins and outs of the product and the service. And people don't care about that. They care about the solution. They care about how it's going to make them feel, how it's going to make their life easier, how wearing your clothes is going to make them feel about themselves and build their confidence and how your coaching is going to help them achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve. That's what you have to ask yourself. Is your messaging clear? Are you promoting the solution, the dream, right? And, And if it is, then maybe you could look at something else, but maybe it's not. And the way to do this is to become a really great storyteller. You have to learn to tell stories, whether it's the story of why you are different, why your product or service is unique, why it's the solution for your target audience. Tell the story of the customer. Look, you are struggling right now in your career, and this is what it feels like. I know what it feels like because I've been there, but here's the solution, right? My coaching is going to help you get clear about what you want in your career, you know, make the decision to uh, do what you want to do, find the job that you love where it doesn't feel like work, whatever your solution is, right? You have to be a storyteller. You have to paint the picture for somebody so that they want to buy your product or service, so that they know that you have the solution, so they know how your product is going to make them feel. And a lot of us, have to get better at telling stories in our business, right? I used to do this workshop, and I still do every once in a while, called The Power of Telling Your Story in Your Business. And that's what you have to learn to do. You have to tell your customer's story so well that you're inside their mind. You have to tell their story better than they know their story. And, and that requires you to get in this inside of the minds of your potential customers or your target market and really pitch to them like, this is where you are. I feel where you are and this is where you want to go. And I'm the one to help you to get there. All right. So learn to tell stories, learn to tighten up your messaging so that it speaks to your ideal customers and clients. 
So before you think about closing down your business, ask yourself, is my messaging clear? Uh, Am I communicating the pain points? Am I communicating the solution that I have that's going to help them to solve their pain points? And am I painting a picture for a potential client so that they see my product or solution as the only thing that they want to buy? Okay, so that's the first thing. That's the first thing that you do before you, you shut down your business. Okay, I want you to take a look at that. The second thing I want you to do is if you don't know, you're not clear, then ask your audience what they want. Like this is so underrated. Most business owners and most entrepreneurs don't do this because we think that we know what our customers or potential customers want. And we try to shove it down the throats. We're like, take this thing. Just take it. I know that you want it. Take it. Take it. That's what we try to do. Right? And trust me, I've been there many, many times. I've gone out and created programs and courses and tried to throw it down people's throats to realize that it's not what they wanted and it's not what my audience needed. And had I asked a question, it would have saved me months and months of designing a course or a program that people just didn't want. And so I learned the hard way, you know, spending thousands of dollars and hours and hours and months and months of designing courses and programs that my audience and my potential customers and my clients didn't even want. So I learned the hard way. I don't want you to learn the hard way. So what I want you to do is to to ask your audience what they want. It's so underrated and undervalued, but it's the simplest thing that we can do as entrepreneurs and business owners. You send out a survey to your audience, to your followers, to your clients, to people on your email list, and you just ask them, you know, what when it comes to X, what is your biggest struggle? Or when it comes to these products and services, what is your biggest challenge? Or what would you like me to what would you like to me to offer more of that you need? Right? Ask those types of questions. What types of services or products do you want me to sell you? Right? Like just be straight up with people. Ask any one of those questions. Ask people what it is that they want that is going to help them in their life. And then give it to them, right? It sounds so simple, but it's it's something that we just don't ask enough of. And so sometimes you, you might not be where you want to be with your business, or you might not be... Um, You might not have the sales or you might not have the clients and the customers that you want because you're not providing them with what it is that they want. And the way to find out is to just ask, what do you want? Right. And then you go out and then you start to ask more questions about what they want. Once they tell you what they want, it's like, okay, well, what are your biggest pain points with what you want? And then all of a sudden now you start to put together the solution for your audience and your clients. And then you say, hey, this is what you told me you wanted. This is what I put together for you. Now I'm inviting you to, you know, buy this course, the program, the coaching, the product, and um, I'm responding to what you wanted. It's a much easier sale when you give people what they ask for than trying to throw things down people's throats. And trust me, I've done this many, many times with lots of different products I've sold with lots of courses and programs. So I know what it's like. I know what it's like to think that I know what people want. And I'm like, yes, this is what you need. I'm going to give it to you. I go put all my time and effort into it. And then everything falls flat. And I go back and do all the things I'm talking about to you. Was was it my messaging? Nah, my messaging seemed like it was right. Nah, maybe it wasn't. Then I go back and I ask my audience, you know, what is it about this that you don't like? Or what is it that you do want? And then they didn't want the thing that I developed. So I should have just asked them what they wanted beforehand and then go and develop it. And that's something that I learned as a coach and as a, you know, as a uh, somebody who sells courses and programs, never go out there and design something unless you know for sure that your audience wants or needs it. I, I learned that so many times. And that's a message to you. If you're in, if you have a business now, you're thinking about starting a business, 
whether it's coaching or speaking or teaching or courses or whatever it is, and you think that you have the, the, the perfect idea, the perfect solution, make sure that you ask your audience first. Ask them. When it comes to whatever, what is your biggest challenge? What would you like to see in this product or this service? Ask them before you go out there and develop it or design it or decide that you want to sell it. That's one of the biggest things that I've learned over the years. And so I want you to do that. If you're at a crossroads in your business right now and you're thinking about shutting it down, think things just aren't working out, I want you to first take a look at your messaging. What is your copy on your website? What is your copy on your social media? What is your copy on your sales pages, right? What is the messaging? Make sure that that's clear first. Then you want to ask your audience, like, what is it that you want uh, when it comes to X or when it comes to this, what is your biggest challenge or what would you like me to do more of? Ask them those questions, right? And then the third thing that I want you to do is I want you to find the right who. Because sometimes we think that we have we have to know all the answers, especially as entrepreneurs, right? Sometimes we're just solopreneurs. We're, we're trying to do everything on ourselves. We're the marketing department, we're the copywriting, we're the sales department, you know, we're the our own virtual assistant, we're the web designer, we're the graphics person. We're trying to do everything, right? And I had to learn this too the hard way. Trying to do everything just wasn't working. I couldn't, I'm not the master of everything. I ha- I should have been working on what I did best and had a team around me of other people who had their own areas of expertise. And this is something that maybe you're in this situation. Maybe you're a solopreneur, or even if you're not, even if you're not a solopreneur, you might just have to find the right who, right? Who is the person that can help you do what it is that you need to do to pivot in your business or to figure things out? Now, it could be a coach, it could be some type of contractor or a consultant or a, an assist virtual assistant, but who is the person that can help you figure this all out? And I think sometimes because we're so overwhelmed and we're trying to juggle all these balls in the air and figure all these things out, it gets overwhelming, we get stressed, we can't see things from other perspectives And as a result, our business just falls flat. We don't make any sales or we're just not growing and not scaling the business. And and we think, you know what? It's time to give up. It's time to throw in the towel. This isn't the right business for me. I just got to give, get rid of this and, and move on to something else. And again, there are times where maybe you have to do that. There are times that maybe This isn't something you're passionate about anymore. Maybe it's something that you just became really stagnant in. Maybe you realize that the industry is just saturated and the market's saturated. And even though things can be saturated, you can still have your piece of the pie. Maybe you just don't have the energy for that. I get all that. And that's why I think it's important to consider these three things first before you actually shut down the business and move on to something else. So, Finding the right who. Who is the person that you need to connect with that can help you? Maybe you need a coach. Maybe you need a business coach. Maybe you need a coach, a communications coach or a copywriting coach. Maybe you need someone to just do it for you. Maybe you need a freelancer to come in and just take over certain aspects of your business so that you can focus on the thing that you do well and they can do what they do well. Right? That's something that we can think about. And there's so many freelancer websites out there that you can uh, you can go and you can find freelancers who specialize in so many different areas to help you grow your business or get your business back on track. You get out there and find a coach, find the right coach that can help you take your business to the next level. There's so many things that you can do, but it's sometimes it's just about finding the right person. Right. It's just about getting in contact with the right person who can see something from a different angle, utilize their expertise and their knowledge and their experience to help you figure things out in your business before you decide to shut it down. 
Those are the three things. And and these are things that I've had to learn the hard way. And I don't want you to learn the hard way. I had to get clear on my messaging. I had to ask my audience what it is that they want or what was the issue with the product that I was or service I was trying to offer. And then I had to find the right who's. I had to find the right who's. I got myself a business coach. I got a virtual assistant. I got some people to do my graphics. I got people to edit my podcast. Like once I started getting the right people on board, my business started growing. And as a result, I was able to focus on what I did well instead of trying to do all of these other things and really spreading myself thin. So that would be my suggestion to you. Try those three things before you decide to shut down your business and see what happens. At the end of all of that, you might realize, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to keep going with this business because it is something I'm passionate about. And maybe I just lost the passion because the business wasn't growing the way I expected. Or you might be like, nah, I'm ready to close this down. I I, I don't have the time or the effort or the energy. I'm not passionate about this anymore. Or maybe, you know, my audience and the people that follow me, they don't want this from me. And and I love my audience. I love my, my clients. I love my followers, so I'm going to give them what they want instead of what I want to give them. And that's fine too. But whatever works for you. But I just think that asking yourself these three questions and really thinking about your business before you close it down um, may help to give you some insights for whether you continue or not. Because once I started asking myself these questions about my previous businesses, it helped me to get focused when I decided to launch the next business. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're constantly looking to add new types of businesses to our portfolio or new streams of revenue or new ways that we can help people solve their problems or or new products. And asking ourselves these questions before we run out there and do the next thing is going to be really helpful for us. So that's what I had for you for this episode. I'd love to hear from you. You know, send me a message on Instagram at I am Danny Stone. Would love to hear from you and love to hear your thoughts about this episode or maybe where you are in your business right now. If you have a business or the type of business that you're considering starting, if you're thinking about it, or maybe even the type of side hustle that you have. I just want to hear from you. (laughs) So check me out on Instagram at I am Danny Stone. And I'm looking forward to the next episode. And having you as my co-host, as always, I want to thank you again for, for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next episode. Take care. Thanks so much for being my co-host on this episode of the Grind and Gratitude Show. I really appreciate you. I hope that you learned something and you're motivated to take action and get on your grind. Didn't that go by fast? If you want more, head over to grindandgratitude.com for show notes and more information about this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a rating so more people will tune in. And let me say this. There's something special about you. Grind until you find it. Be grateful when you get it.